Right, welcome back everyone. We've got some videos coming up on the Land Rover now. Some engine work needed. I don't know how much yet. Uh, I took it out on a long run to a show recently and when I looked in the engine bay the oil filler had been spitting oil. Some's gone back there on the dizzy cap, on the air filter hose as well. Not a lot of oil for three hours driving, but that is crankcase pressure somehow pushing oil back out the filler. The I've done a compression test. All the cylinders are about 120 dry and 130 wet. So there's nothing serious going on. The head gasket's not split between cylinders, and I don't have a big problem in you know only one cylinder. But I don't know what condition the head gasket's in, and I also don't actually know if the valve seats have had inserts machined in for unleaded fuel. I would like to know both things about the engine before I go on another long run. So I'm going to take the head off, I'm going to do the head gasket, I'm going to have a look at the valves and anything else in the top, have a look at the pistons and the bores and decide on an actual plan of what I want to do as I get into it and see what the condition things are. Hopefully we sweeten it up and I can find the source of this crankcase pressure issue. I've never had rocker gear out, but if I understand correctly, clipping them up is going to stop it all springing apart. We'll find out, won't we? I know the upside down rocker colour trick, but I think that's achieving the same thing a bit more awkwardly. It's these springs that push it all apart. Well, they can't if these are clipped, so we'll see. Oh dear, that's heavy. Oh.
Oh, f I got some out. I got some out. Not the result we were looking for, though, eh? Oh well. Alright, that manifold's got to come off then. Right, here are the valves after a clean up. Very difficult to get absolutely spot on. These are old valves. The exhaust valves have a step near the bottom and they are stamped Rover. And a part number. The inlet valves are not. I don't know if that means the inlet valves have been replaced at some point or if these are all original. Now, the question is whether we can lap them sufficiently. These are scuffed, they are worn, but when they're in the guides, I need to put, a, I could put a dial gauge on them, I suppose, to actually measure the play, because you do get guidance for the amount of play that's okay. It'll just make it a little bit more reliable when you set the tappet clearance. You know your valves are not hitting the seat off centre and not sealing. And we are looking for compression improvements because what started all this is crankcase pressure spitting oil out the filler. So I'm undecided but I'm going to try lapping the worst example <coughs> and see how that goes and if it seems realistic then I'll think about the head. I also need to check the surface of the head against the straight edge and some feeler gauges. Right, I'm going to measure these bores now. I'm unlikely to get into doing anything on the bottom end at the moment because I'm moving in the next few weeks. These pistons, the X stamped marks the front of the vehicle for when reinserting pistons. The thrust axis is across here. Um, that's the axis of the con rods. Okay, so the thrust is against the near side and off side walls of the cylinder wears more in that direction so it matters um, front of the vehicle also I've got cylinders numbers one two three four stamped on here I've also got B stamped on cylinder one piston one A on piston two A on piston three and A on piston four now A and B signify different sizings, very minimal. I forget what they are, I think A might be something like 2 thou, B might be 4. In the green repair operations manual these codes are listed with their size differences. In the series 2 parts manual the pistons are described are listed by different part numbers and they're called grade A, grade B, grade C and so on. The pistons are selectively assembled to a block and chosen to a cylinder where they best fit. Now I don't know whether they would actually check them by hand or or what. But I understand it's related to selective assembly and even if you ordered all new pistons of the same size and had a rebore, then when assembling the engine you would still hand fit each piston to each cylinder and see, pick which cylinder it seemed to fit best. Where there was least resistance and there was a fit, where there was no sticking point at any point in the bore for that piston. So there is some selective assembly involved. I think that's what the A's and B's are. Let me know if you know any different or you've just got 
more information about how that works. I'd be interested to know more. I don't think it's a case that, you know, at some point over the vehicle's life, one cylinder has been losing compression faster than another, and then someone's come in and they fit a grade A two thou oversized piston to account for wear and things. But that might be the case. Let me know if you know that that's something that, that happened, or if it's to do with selective assembly. Anyway, I'm mostly doing a top end refresh at the moment. Probably this block needs reboring, but I'm going to measure the bore on the thrust axis, okay, and the fore and aft axis in each cylinder at the point above piston ring travel, just below that ridge of piston ring travel, and with the piston still in, just above the piston crown when the piston's at bottom dead center, which is not the bottom of the bore, but it gives me a little bit of scope for measuring taper. I'll also measure ovality and then I know at what mileage and when I did that head refresh what all of my measurements were. Um, I'll also know you know how far into needing a rebore it is or if it's okay or what. So but while it's all exposed I'm going to take these measurements. The results are not too shabby. It would look like no rebore is needed, which is and isn't surprising, I suppose. 120 compression, not helped much by oil, consistent readings. You know, the bores are okay. I could fit new pistons and rings and hone the bores. That almost certainly would improve things, but I am moving in a few weeks. So, having taken the measurements, and seeing it's well within, uh, well within the eight thou taper that you're allowed, I'm going to draw the line at a D coke new head gasket and having lapped the valve seats. We'll see what improvement, if anything, that's made to compression. I might have made things worse in terms of crankcase pressure by lapping the valves if they're sealing better now. I'll get more blow by and more crankcase pressure, but we'll see. I'm wary of getting in too deep as I'm moving soon, so I think I'm going to reassemble now and we'll see how it goes on the next long run. I'm also cleaning out that rocker breather properly. Now, that might have been blocked. That might have been causing some of that crankcase pressure. I might, you know, I don't want to get into a lot of engine work when actually behind the original problem is something quite simple. So I'm going to tread careful. So we'll call it a decoke head gasket and lap the valves this time. In the next video, we'll put it back together and do a compression test. And then I'll update you all when I've been on another long run to see if she's still spitting oil or not. All right, see you soon.